Flowchart questions in organic chemistry can seem really tricky because you've got to figure out based on information given to you by an arrow what the precursor molecule could have been but you've also got to establish which functional groups are reacting on an existing structure just being given information on the arrow. I'm going to give you some tips in this video about how to approach the flowchart questions in your organic chemistry A-level examinations. So for this one, to get started with, way over here on the left hand side, I need to think about what functional groups could be formed by the conditions mentioned on the arrow, but also what functional groups would have no involvement whatsoever with this kind of set of conditions. So let's take a look. We have the O in square brackets. Now the O in square brackets here is an oxidizing agent. So this is likely to be acidified potassium dichromate, for instance, and you can see here we're heating under reflux. Now for the OCRA specification in module four, you discover that that is the way we can convert a primary alcohol into a carboxylic acid group like this one here. So that is my carboxylic acid functional group. The way I make that is with exactly this set of combination of reagents and conditions. What about the chlorine that's on there though? What about this functional group? Nothing, absolutely nothing but it's just as important that you can appreciate that this group is formed with this set of reagents and conditions that you know to leave this one alone and still include it down here on the original structure. So what I need to do now is draw my precursor molecule just here, making sure I leave this alone, but I revert this back to the primary alcohol functional group necessary to produce that carboxylic acid. And there we have it. So what I have here is my primary alcohol functional group. So we can see here that this primary alcohol functional group is the one that becomes the carboxylic acid using the oxidizing agent of acidified potassium dichromate, you would assume, and heating under reflux. But also, just as important, this CL group here, the CCL, is being left alone. Not everything reacts every single time in one of these flow charts, but they can sometimes hide reactions that are going to take place, mixing up your modules, and that's what we're going to study over here. But let's get to that point with the flowchart first. Next up, what other tricks can be used in the exam? Well, they've been really helpful here, and they've given us the drawn-out structure for the organic compound. But here, we're being given another organic compound quite subtly, as a reagent alongside some concentrated sulfuric acid and a bit of heat. Studying module six for the OCRA specification will teach you that what's taking place here is an esterification. And again, we need to look at the organic compound and think what groups do, if not all, react with that methanoic acid under the acidic conditions. And once again, it is actually just the carboxylic acid group but only by studying the course properly would you be aware to leave that CCL again alone for this process. So what I need to show in the box just here is this molecule now with an ester group over here for the carboxylic acid. And there we have it once again. What we have here now is an ester functional group where the carboxylic acid was before, and I've used this methanol here to get that ester functional group. And again, in addition to this ester, I have left that CCL well alone, making sure that I haven't just reacted everything for the sake of reacting the whole molecule. That then leads me, finally, for this group's opportunity to react alongside another functional group on the molecule in this quite sly adjustment to the structure that I have seen come up in some of the recent OCR examinations. What we can see here is we just have aqueous hydroxide ions mentioned on the arrow. So you would expect perhaps this to be shown as sodium hydroxide, but they deliberately here want to assess your knowledge of what happens to the functional group without the presence of the group one metal. So let's have a look at the product of this and it will help us understand what's taking place in this process. 
The product is going to have the same continuous carbon chain. So I'm going to maintain that all the way through here. I'm going to have that right the way through. I'm going to have my branch up here and I'm going to make sure I've got my hydrogen atoms all the way through here before I go back and address the functional groups. So up here, I'm going to maintain that C double bond O, but then when I get to where the ester would normally shown here, I've used aqueous hydroxide ions just here, which are going to perform an alkaline hydrolysis of this ester functional group. What does that leave behind? It leaves behind this O negative just here. So it leaves behind this oxygen with a single negative charge straight attached there to the C double bond O. Do I need to show the Na plus alongside with that? Do I need to make sure that I've got the Na plus here? Absolutely not. I'm definitely not going to include that because it wasn't mentioned as sodium hydroxide inside the reagents on the arrow. I want to make sure I'm showing that negative charge nice and clearly here. If I was given sodium hydroxide in full, then I could show the NaO here, making sure that connectivity is to the oxygen, but I'm definitely not doing that here because I'm assuming what type of alkali was used. Now you might wonder at this point, what happened to the CH3? Well, the CH3 actually would be a second organic compound here, actually going back to the methanol from before. And in an exam, they would make it quite clear to you either with two boxes or information that you need to show two structures within the one box that they are expecting another product. They will sometimes refer to this as a second organic product, but other times they'll just say it's another product because that could include things like water in other reactions. So what else? Well, over here now where I have this CCL, our attention all the way through this flow chart has been drawn to that carboxylic acid, then ester, down there with the primary alcohol, end of the structure. But the CCL in module four actually is going to react with that alkali condition. It's nucleophilic substitution, in fact, if we were to consider a mechanism. And what I'm going to produce here is a tertiary alcohol functional group. And that little use of the information on the arrow and the distraction all the way down here focusing on this functional group has perhaps led us to believe that this group isn't doing anything. And in a recent exam, OCR did actually use a CBR bond for just this purpose on an organic structure, asking for two molecules at the end of a flowchart style diagram. Hopefully that gives you pause for thought when it comes to the flowcharts looking at how you can use the information on the arrow to determine the precursor molecule, how we need to be careful not to react all, maybe just selected functional groups, but also don't forget to see the bigger picture with your organic chemistry, considering both the first year and second year organic modules, especially when it comes to very subtle and quite common reagents, like just alkali conditions or even just acidic conditions in other examples. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. But until next time, happy revising.